John Everson and our next guest, one financial Phil McCoy. Good morning, Philip. Good morning, guys. How are you all? We're living the dream, Phil. Wait, that's his line. <laughs> I wanted to throw him off a little bit. Phil, Phil and I in the morning, we have a routine, and it's pretty much the exact same greeting every single morning. If it varies by one word, it throws us off entirely. I want to get Phil a little lighter to, on his feet. I try feet. to mix it up for you every now and then. Sometimes. Sometimes. Uh, Philip? Yes, sir? We're, we're, in, we're in kind of like, uh, you know, we got a month or, and a half till NFL training camp begins. I think the, uh, the minor league football season, I think the regular season ended yesterday, I think. I don't know they, what they're. I'm, I don't follow them too what too much. What Dylan? Do they have an, do they have another game or what? I thought I thought they finished it up yesterday. You don't know. All right, the Washington whatever DC DC something or other. Yeah, I I don't know their name. I I don't follow them that much. The DC Defenders. There you go, DC Defenders. We're kind of been, we're in like football no man's land right now. But purgatory. Me, purgatory. Yeah. There you go. But let me ask you about. Uh, NIL and, and what have you, because they're going to college football is going to get their video game back. This is kind of funny. It's come full circle because it was video game revenue that effectively caused all the lawsuits that started the payments to players. And that's been the yes. that's been the Wild West. I, I think when we all thought of of paying players, we kind of thought of like a revenue pool and money would be distributed that way. And then we thought, well, you know, if a kid gets a you know, a, a car dealership ad like Tyson Bajan got at Shepard, that's one thing. But instead, it's it's become like the New York Yankees of of college football. Whoever has the most money to pay out to these kids, and apparently you can make a promise for any amount you want. You don't have to follow through. There's no law with that or whatever. Uh, and, and I guess they're going to try to get some kind of regulation as they distribute some of this NCAA uh, 25 money out to these kids. Yeah, and then I, I go all over the place with NIL and the transfer portal, which seems to be one and the same, really, because some of these kids are leaving or getting in the transfer portal for more money. Yeah, promises of bigger money. I, yeah, and I, I mean, I have, there, I'm, I'm really all over the place. On one hand, I don't like it. As a fan, I like to see those guys go through four or five years at the at the same school, regardless of what the sport is. But on the other hand, I do agree that for decades they've been taking advantage of these kids' name, image, and likeness, whether it's with video games, football jerseys, whatever it is. They're making money off the backs of the kids. They, yes, they, some of them, not all, some of them get scholarships and they get paid in that way, but it is nowhere near what they're bringing into those schools. So I, I did agree or do agree to some point with them, the ability to make money, regardless of what their age is. If someone's willing to pay them, I believe they should be able to make the money, but it does create some issues now when you've got some, you've got a lot of these kids that's been at four different schools. I can't keep up with them. It's worse than what uh, the professional sports are with their contracts. So I'm hoping, and I, and I do wonder if if you really wrangled in the transfer portal, if it wouldn't take care of a lot of the issues. Because now, you know, as it stands, they can play at four or five different schools throughout the course of their collegiate career. So on one hand, I don't like it as a stand. On the other hand, I, I do kind of get it because a lot of these kids have been taken advantage of sure. for quite some time or making money off of them. Well, and you got an interesting scenario now, and Dylan's got his earphones on too, where you could actually stay in school. And I think this applies more to basketball than it does to football in general, but it applies to both. You could stay in school and make more money than you would make yeah. on your rookie contract in the pros. <laughs> And that's, I think that's kind of good for college sports, though, isn't it? Because you've got every year you've got the best of the best players opting, and I don't blame them, to go to the NFL, NBA, or whatever it may be to, to make more money. And if it helps keep them at those universities and stay in school, I'm kind of in favor of that. But I get it, you know, because you've got these some getting taken advantage of with verbal contracts. There's a player at Florida, I think, was verbally guaranteed $12 million and and they essentially were like, yeah, whatever, we just said that. And there's nowhere to hold them liable for it because it, it is a verbal contract. 
Yeah, <laughs> Phil, we we, t- we tend to push back on that and said it's it's not the way you used to do it. The, the fans don't like like it. Uh, however, the flip side is it's, it has resulted in more parity in the conferences. It's no longer one or two teams running away. Uh, all the conferences are, are strong or approximately equal from the top to near the bottom. Yeah, and it, I mean, and there is, I think there is some benefit even to the smaller schools. If you look at, you know, just look at Tyson as an example to where maybe you can get one high level recruit to come to your school because you've only got so much, you know, local NIL or whatever it may be to pay that kid. So it could keep him on maybe a Division two or a mid major Division one. Uh, it may keep him where he's at instead of going and just being a face in the crowd at, say, in Alabama or, or somewhere like that. This is way out of my expertise, but it, it, are the NIL rules that much different than the laws that protect the money, the income from child stars? You know, who are, who, they star in movies and they get a lot of money, and they should because they're they're earning the money. How, how is that different? I don't think it's different at all, quite honestly, other than in most cases that I owe money going to adults. So I don't think it's different at all. Because, you know, it just seems to be somebody's making money off of, yes. off, off of somebody's image, name, image, and likeness, then the person who owns the name, image, and likeness should be getting the a good should share of that. It would just make it's common sense to I me. Agree. Go ahead, Dylan. What are you gonna say? I agree. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go after people for this Hatfield McCoy stuff. Hey, they're using my name. There, there you go. I, I deserve some money. For Phil, that. image and likeness. What, I, I'm kind of yeah. in the. I'm kind of in the same spot with with Phil with, with this, where there it, it does feel like that the the college players need need to be getting some cut of all of the 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 money that college football in particular uh, brings in. But at the same time, it is sort of the wild west in terms of the regulations behind it. In the same way that it's in the same way like there any sector of the of the economy it's like anywhere in capitalism if you don't really if you just kind of let it run wild then like you know, monopolies will form in the same way well it's like well if we let everyone in college football do whatever they want Alabama's going to end up with all of the good players so they just have to, it's so new that they have to figure out you know how to rein it all in and they're kind of just doing it on the fly Total wow. silence. Another, another. <laughs> Dylan just brought down the show, baby. <laughs> Boom. He just dropped the mic. Drop the mic and walk out, baby. So, Phil, it, technically, like, if you're a high school kid and, and you get paid however amount of money that you're going to get paid to go to a particular college, that's earned money. You could open up a, a Roth IRA on the spot, couldn't you? As soon as you got the check. Well, you couldn't, unless, except for most of these are making too much money to, to participate in a Roth. So we'd have to talk about a backdoor Roth for a lot of these kids because a lot of a lot of times they're getting paid so much that it's it, it exceeds the income limit to allow them to uh, to contribute to a Roth IRA. Yeah. But yes, they could come see financial Phil, uh, especially that young. What's a what's a backdoor to, uh, what's a backdoor Roth Phil? Explain that one. Oh boy, you just opened up a can of worms. Backdoor Roth is for someone that exceeds in most cases exceeds the income limit for. Uh, contributing to a Roth IRA, so you make a non-deductible traditional IRA, so you don't deduct that from your tax return, and you don't deduct it because your income is too high. Those income limits are are one and the same in some cases, so you can't deduct it. Therefore, when you convert it to a tr- to a Roth IRA, there's no taxes due because you never took the deduction, and it's a very complex, and you need the help of a financial professional and a CPA when you do these sort of things to make sure that it's recorded correctly. Phil, we are expecting some news at the end of this week that could affect the markets uh, in regards to job reports. What's up? That's a huge, and we've got NVIDIA doing their stock split, I think, also on Friday. So Friday's going to be a really, really big day. Now, we'll we'll start with NVIDIA because it's going to get a lot of attention this week. It's gotten a lot of attention this year because of their uh because of the artificial intelligence and the boom in semiconductors the stock split in itself truly means absolutely nothing however it does make it more attractive to small retail investors instead of spending a thousand or eleven hundred dollars per share 
for that stock, it's easier to purchase at 110, 120, whatever it's going to be once it becomes a split. But most importantly, it makes it much easier for option contracts. Option contracts you have to purchase in lots of 100. So if you're doing a option contract on, say, NVIDIA, you would have to either hold cash or that stock in the amount of 100 shares of NVIDIA, which would be a lot of money right now at the moment. So once it does the 10 for 1 split, it could make the option market more volatile. But ultimately, uh, fundamentally, it doesn't mean anything for the company, but it will get a lot of attention. And they kicked off the weekend by announcing some other technology. There's some sort of bot or something that they've created that's caused a bounce overnight. So NVIDIA will be in the news. But but most importantly for our markets will be that jobs report that comes on Friday, and we're looking for cracks. We don't want a, a complete crippling of the job market, but we need a crack in the job market to encourage, and I know I don't want to talk about this anymore either, but to encourage the Federal Reserve to begin the rate-cutting process that we thought back in December that they would be deep into by this point, but economic data hadn't supported it. So, so far this year we've received no rate cuts, and I don't even know that there's any on the table. But to initiate that conversation, we need to see cracks in that jobs report this Friday. NVIDIA, by the way, is up a bit more than 3% in pre-market trading. We are still uh, about 40 minutes away from today's uh, opening bell here. N NVIDIA is one of those stocks, Phil, where uh, every $100 mark along the way, I thought it was too expensive to buy. <laughs> 300 400 500 600 yeah. <laughs> And it, it's really taken. It's become it's become a bellwether for artificial intelligence. And when it when it first came about, uh, where it started to become popular, it was a gaming stock. So if you were interested in gaming, Nvidia was the company. But this artificial intelligence and their it, I don't want to say monopoly because there's a lot of others that are digging into what Nvidia is doing to help compete. But they do have they they have cornered the market for the time being on artificial intelligence so when and and they're a big story this year and and i don't want to put too much emphasis on one company but the reason to me anyway that they're so big is we haven't had that economic data that we thought we would get in december to support rate cuts but nvidia and megatech in particular has helped prop our markets up to where it's, it's been a pretty good year so far you know if you look at the s p and to me the s p is the most important index but if you look at the S&P, it's up close to 11% so far this year, which is tracking uh, a pretty daggone good year if it can continue. But a lot of that's due to mega, Megatech and, and NVIDIA. Elon Musk predicted last week that uh, in, in the near short term, yeah, in the next 15, 20 years, AI is going to take over most jobs in the United States. That'll be an interesting statistic. I'm not sure how people are going to make money. I guess you better learn artificial intelligence somehow. I don't. I don't either. And, and there's some fears that, I, and, and my fears are ignorant fears. And I've talked about that before. And I mean ignorant by way of I don't fully understand the the. I know what artificial intelligence is, and I know what it does, but how to monetize it and and the likes. I don't fully wrap my arms around that quite yet because it's so new. But I do understand that it is a huge part of our market in this in the story going moving forward. I get a number of news feeds, and if, when I read through, you can tell which ones are written by the AI bots, be, just from some of the grammatical choices and spelling issues and, and such. You can see that somebody has said, write an article on such and such. And they're pretty complete, um, but obviously there's not been a live reporter that's been involved. There was a story this morning yeah. I heard, and it had to do with artificial intelligence and searching for facts and Google AI, for instance, and what they do. Do when they search for an answer is they search every single thing on the web that's been published on it to come up with the answer. And some of the stuff that's published is wrong. Some of it's there yeah. as a joke or in humor. So one of the examples they used was how to make cheese stick on pizza. And the answer was to glue it on. <laughs> That someone put as a joke. Well, when searched for, that was the answer that AI came up with as to how to make cheese stick on pizza. Glue it on. Well, you can see, obviously, that that's just not the way you want to eat your pizza, with a mouthful of glue. <laughs> so there, there are some improvements that need to be made. Obviously, this is in its infancy. But, John, in regards to your point about what Elon Musk said, 
I think uh, I'm 61, and at every stop along the way when technology has gone to the next level, the same prediction That's has true. been made, which is that this will ultimately put everybody out of work. So who will be around to have money to buy the products that are being produced? And last I looked, I think the unemployment rate is, what, 3%? But it has redefined a lot of the jobs. 3.9, yeah. Phil? Yeah, it's it's yep, redefined. It, and it does change. Yeah, but the but new jobs are created that's that ultimately exactly, need yeah. people to do the work that's still being done, and you know, I, so this is just the next prediction that we're all going to be out of work at some point in the future with no money to spend on well, all the these ones great get products. left behind are the ones who are mid or late career, hmm. right? The, the ones who are sure. coming through, they learn the new technology to do the new jobs to support yeah. the new technology. Phil, uh, I know you put a fence between politics and the market. Uh, as much as you possibly can. Uh, the conviction of uh, President Trump last Thursday, will that, in, will that influence the market in either the short or the long term that you see? DJT I, stock, I, I, by I, the way, under 50 bucks now, Bill. Uh, okay. I, I don't think so because if, if I understand correctly, uh, him being found guilty on all 34 counts really has zero impact on his ability and i listened to you guys on friday to get this information but it sounds like it has zero impact on his ability to run and he most likely won't serve any time if he can keep his mouth shut so simply the the thing that remains the same is that the two candidates for president is donald trump and joe biden and we maintain again that it really doesn't matter between those two who wins but asset class wise it could matter overall market wise most likely it won't matter at all between the two that win. So him being convicted on all 34 counts should have zero impact on the market. What may have an impact is if he were to have to serve time or he's not able to run for president. Either of them not able to run for president could impact particular asset classes based off of what they support. And I'm in, in, I'm in my back of my mind, I'm thinking green energy and the likes. That uh, that one may support, another one doesn't. Phil, I my respect for your analytical process has gone up immensely when you said you listened to us on Friday and you came to conclusions <laughs> based upon our Every comments. Every Friday. So, Every Friday. So I couldn't wait to listen to you guys on Friday. I couldn't wait. <laughs> DJT stock at forty nine dollars twenty two cents. Its fifty two week range is uh, twelve dollars forty cents as a low to seventy nine dollars thirty eight cents as a high. I, I, how seriously do people take that stock in the investing community at this point, Phil? In our office, not at all. And I don't know that we have any mutual funds or exchange traded funds that include that stock. We haven't had anyone request to purchase it or any research request on that stock. So it really hasn't rang a bell inside of 1270 Winchester Avenue. We do watch it almost like a meme stock sort of thing uh, just to see how it moves. And we, we get our we get our laughs and Tyler and I would joke back and forth about what we think is going to happen with it. You know, after the conviction, I remember thinking like, oh, this stock's going to go through the roof because all the supporters are going to go out and buy it or, or what have you. But I've been wrong on every turn. But it, it hasn't had any impact on uh, on overall portfolios. Uh, did, I don't remember. Did we cover the uh, the jobs report at the end of the week, Phil? Yeah, we did. Yes. We did. did. We okay. talked about it. And we want to see – or we don't necessarily want to see it, but the Federal Reserve needs to see – some sort of weakness in cracks in our employment market to encourage them to put rate cuts back on the table and maybe have a date for that. And that would give us a boost in advance of rates coming down. That's something important for people to remember. It, the, our markets won't get a boost when the rate cuts actually happen. They'll get a boost like December when we think that they're going to happen, which is why when if we get a crack in the jobs market on Friday, then our market should go up. They should. I don't mean they will. They should go up. And if it's stronger than what's expected, our markets may go down. How do we reach you for more information today and this week, Phil? You can reach us at 304-263-4343 or stop by and see us with an appointment at 1270 Winchester Avenue right here in Marksburg. Thank you, Phil. Have a great week, sir. Thank you, guys. You catch uh, two minutes of Phil's recap on the day's uh, activities of the previous day's market and what's coming up that uh, next day, too. This uh, radio station airs Phil in the mornings at 6.38 and again replayed around 7.38.